Hi everyone. In November last year, Wiltshire Museum was delighted to find out that we've been awarded £47,000 from the Arts Council England Designation Development Fund to review the research undertaken on our nationally important archaeology collections. A Wealth of Knowledge Unlocking a Decade of Archaeological Research is a joint project between the Wiltshire Museum as lead partner and Salisbury Museum. Since 2010, more than 200 postgraduates undertaking archaeological research have visited the two museums to consult the collections, but only a fraction of the results of this research have been fed back into our collections databases and gallery displays. One of the main aims of the project is to identify the results of all this research and then update our museum's records to improve our collections management systems. As an example, Ritual in Early Bronze Age Grave Goods by Anne Woodward and John Hunter was a major re-evaluation of some of the most important artefacts ever discovered, which culminated in a monograph published in 2015. However, up until now, the findings have only been partially integrated into the interpretation of the museum's collections. And the review of this study alone will create hundreds of improved object records, to include more detailed descriptions of the individual items, new photography, and in some cases, and most importantly, a whole new understanding of the significance of the object itself. Here's an example. In 2017, Dr. Tom Booth from Bristol University visited the Wiltshire Museum to radiocarbon date a piece of worked bone found inside a Bronze Age barrow at Wilsford. This was part of the project, The Power of Relics, Curating Human Bone in the British Bronze Age. This bone object was originally catalogued by the museum as a worked bone tube found with a primary humation inside Bell Barrow Wilsford G58. Now that's fairly uninspiring and doesn't tell us very much, does it? But when combining Dr. Booth's work on ancestral relics with the work of Woodward and Hunter, the object is transformed into a worked bone tube recently identified as being a musical instrument. Made from a human femur which has been significantly scraped out, there's a side hole at the damage end that is no longer visible. The tube has been carefully finished with a high polish on the surface, suggesting that it was a valuable and highly prized item. Radiocarbon dated to 1745 to 1617 BC, this instrument was probably not in use for a long period of time and might have come from a person that could have lived within the memory of the individual with which it was buried. Found with a male inhumation in Bell Barrow Wilsford G58, excavated by William Cunnington in the early years of the 19th century. The other grave goods found inside this barrow include a battle axe, a bronze flanged axe, a unique pronged object, a bone plate, an antler handle, a tusk and a grooved stone. So that's quite a difference in the level of information between those two descriptions there. And this is now what we call an enhanced record with a detailed description that explains what the object is, how it was used and the potential importance to both its owner and the archeological record. Now, Research into museums collections inevitably impacts on the current interpretation in gallery displays and all too often object captions and interpretation panels are out of date before the ink has barely had the chance to dry. Recent analysis by Dr Chris Standish from Southampton University on the source of the prehistoric gold used to make the minute studs which decorate the handle of the dagger from Wilsford G5 otherwise known as bush barrow, is a classic example of this. Using lead isotope analysis as a way to link a metal artefact back to its ore source, Dr Standish now believes that the most likely origin of the gold used to make the studs is southern Britain, probably Cornwall. The dagger itself is often associated with Brittany, but there's no reason why the gold used to decorate the wooden handle wasn't circulating around southern Britain, crossing the channel to production centres elsewhere and then eventually making its way back to Wessex. The new knowledge from this analysis in 
inevitably changes our current thinking on the manufacture and provenance of the dagger and will need to be reflected in its future interpretation and display at the museum. And as part of the Wealth of Knowledge project, the museum will have the opportunity to update our displays with the latest research results from the analysis carried out by the likes of Dr Standish and Dr Booth. And this is so terribly important because it keeps us relevant to our existing audiences as well as trying to engage new ones. At the museum, we're also going to try and explore the potential to incorporate simple digital displays to highlight ongoing research into the collections. And this will include interviews with researchers explaining their work. For a while now, I've been twisting the arms of various researchers to do five minute videos that captures the core aspects of this work so that we can take these videos and put them into the galleries to enhance our interpretation for our visitors. The Wealth of Knowledge project will not only ensure that research results become an integral part of the museum's interpretation of its collections, but it'll also culminate in a combined online collections database, creating a virtual Wessex Museums collection, not only for Devizes and Salisbury, but also for our colleagues in Dorchester and Poole as part of the Wessex Museums partnership. The latest research into the collections will appear on a new shared website as well as on our own, making the information accessible in the widest possible terms. Enhanced collections records for the musical instrument from Wilsford G58 and the Bushborough Dagger will be prioritised in online searches and displayed as collections highlights and objects of the week will be posted on newly set up social media channels like YouTube. Longer term, by reviewing the research that has been undertaken on our collections over the past decade, it will also be possible for the museum to take a lead and identify the under-researched areas of our own collections, with a view to promoting them as possible areas of future inquiry to postgraduate students. This is a new and dynamic way forward for museums who are usually approached with requests to view material rather than considering what they might like to find out about their own collections and then actively pursuing academic partners with whom they can work collaboratively. As you can see from this pie chart and perhaps not unsurprisingly, a majority of the 200 postgraduates who have visited the museum over the past decade have come to see our Neolithic and Bronze Age collections, as that's what we're known for. But is there the potential to do more with our Iron Age, Roman, Anglo-Saxon and medieval collections? We intend to gauge with our academic colleagues working at universities across the country, running a series of webinars to find out. The aim being to identify joint research priorities for the collections in both Devizes and Salisbury. These webinars will eventually include the opportunity for researchers to visit our stores and review our archaeological archives. And the identified research priorities will be launched at the Archaeology in Wiltshire conference in the spring of 2022. The work will then feed into a development of a research framework for the museums. These are really exciting times for museums with the opportunity for us to become hubs of academic research. However, if museums don't engage with projects like this, then what we're left with is boxes and boxes of stuff sitting in dark storerooms doing nothing for years on end. And museums who care for archaeology archives should really do their utmost to provide access to their collections for the purposes of academic research. But it's not a one way street. And in turn, researchers shouldn't think that their relationship with a museum is over after they visited. Curators like me have spent many hundreds of hours every year facilitating research. And if the results of that research are not fed back, then displays become static and outdated. And ultimately, museums are unable to properly share the new discoveries made about their collections with the visitors and future researchers. Now, despite the impact of COVID-19, this project began in earnest in April. It runs for two years and will be undertaken by our almost newly appointed research officer, Will Partridge, working alongside me. These truly are exciting times. And so I ask you to watch this space. Thank you for listening. <laughs>